Hello, my name is Max Drake. I'd like to talk to you about using Revit for extending service into the facility management uh, area of work. This particular project is a uh, event center which can be used for either sports events um, down in the area here or possibly rearranged to actually have con concerts or another area that is used is fashion shows. So I had the idea of, of how do you represent that different seating arrangement regarding the fixed seating that they have but the value related to those seats. Now um, when going through and doing the modelling for these particular um, uh, 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 for these particular seats I gave each one a particular number and the other thing which I did was I gave the chair um, two IDs one ID was based on one arena setup and the other ID was based on another uh, uh, setup one was for concerts and one was a basketball this one here is based on the basketball ones doesn't matter whether it is or not it was just really an exercise in in how do I show those different colors um, so uh, the idea is the re yellow or gold is the top seating so they're the best valued ones the blue is the second value ones and the, the red are the not so valuable ones that you could actually have in the arena um, so each seat has a number and each seat we can actually come out and export to an Excel schedule or something so that we can see what the value of the seat is so we can put a number next to that so we could do that in the schedule format or one of the things that we could do is that we could actually transform that so here if I just actually take a seat and I just go I select category so what I'm doing here is just isolating the seating um, uh, so I'm just going back into the top and in this arrangement here if I just touch a seat I've got the chair IQ it's C is for red which is low value and it has another value depending for this setup that's a C so if I select these the other one that it actually has for those seats is um, it has a um, uh, arena setup um, share parameter as well so um, let's think about it and we can go for setup and if we go to setup number two which would be the concert one so we've just said all of them show me what the setup is for setup two you see the colors of those seats change from the first um, example that we had so this is for if there's a um, uh, concert with the concert stage being at this particular end um, the idea was that whether these were the ideal seats or whatever it was just an example of those um, how this is done uh, it is that basically on the each seat I'll go up and select one of the top there um, it has two other share parameters as well as the share ID and it has an uh, uh, arena setup which can be one or two depending on which one it is that it shows regarding that there's also I'm just tapping VV here to show um, the visibility graphics and if we go into the filters each chair will actually have a value and a color based on chair value S and chair value chair value and chair value S are the two different scenarios that we actually have a chair value B a chair value V S if I can filter by that no and so we have those colors based on those two different conditions and if I go into one of those and um, edit and we choose one of them there chair value there um, it depends on what arena setup so we have two filter rules we have the chair or QI and depending on whether it equals a if it equals a and it's arena setup one then it will do the um, pattern that you actually require for that um, uh, so that's how that process is uh, working inside there that's fine for as far as it goes um, that's inside Revit what we can then do once we're inside Revit is to actually use um, something like Simlab soft 
and SimLab PDF um, exporter, which is a plugin for Revit where you can export that and you can export it showing that um, setup, or else you can actually export it through to SimLab Composer and then from there export it into a PDF. Um, if you go via the second uh, scenario, SimLab um, Composer, you end up with a smaller file size because um, inside the Revit one, if I just do an export from here, um, to a PDF, uh, I have a scope box on here, uh, sorry, a section box, and if I actually just um, uh, do this, there's more information in the model as other parts of the building that are, can be shown as well. I don't I only use this to show the example of the seating, and one example of being able to extend the services of what we do as designers is to actually give this extra value. This is one example of the value that I use and uh, it's for the idea that we can show different things for the people who are using our data. Instead of having a really crude little element here, this is um, an example that I've taken from a New Zealand ticket tech um, for um, a particular area is when you actually go and select your seat, it tends to just give you the next ones and uh, you don't really know. It's got a little thing down here which is showing whether something is abstracted or not. But I think that's a bit limited. One of the other videos that I do is that you can click on a seat within a 3D PDF and it gives you a panorama from that seat so that you can actually see what the view is from a particular seat based on a particular event that you're doing. So that if I was to choose a seat from a certain point of view, it would take me to a hyperlink where I could actually have either a Revit um, panorama, or I could actually have a, three, a 360 panorama that is a photograph that you've actually gone and sat at that seat and taken a photo from that point there, so that you can actually see what that seat is. Now, the nice thing with the 360 panoramas is that depending, it doesn't matter what event, the same panorama will, will work for you for that to show you what viewing you're likely to see from that point of view. Um, I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, thank you very much for watching.